Good afternoon. Ready? Good afternoon. Again, my name is Ile Fabusaro. And uh, who may not know me, I'd like to introduce myself briefly. Um, when I was approached to speak on this, one of the things that I found interesting is the subject roots. I think I had conversation since last year, and COVID came, and it couldn't happen. And you know, when I think roots, as a Yoruba man, and what I'm doing to elevate and position my roots, I also think of the body, because uh, nobody pre-qualifies for success, nobody pre-qualifies for moving forward, our load qualifies. I used to be a banker, and uh, as I was in the banking world, I always wanted to practice my work, which is theater, media, and all. And I did bit of here and there while I was in the bank. Then suddenly, after some time, I pulled out. I joined up with a friend from a company. And we started doing our shows. OK. Is that good now? Sorry, forgive me. I'm not really Is it OK? Is it better? Is it better now? All right. We started doing our multimedia shows, and they were quite successful. Then all of a sudden, a friend told me that he doesn't think he can continue with me. He wants to, he wants to pull away and all that. So I had to leave the organization all over again. Puts a lot of burden on me. And, uh, a burden of how do we go forward, what do we do, and how do we sustain the value addition to our culture and tradition, which is something we hold very dear. So, uh, in 2006, to start Rare Edge Media, some of you have been watching TVs, we've done a lot of Yoruba shows. Uh, such as Awala Dunde, Barakini, and some people may have been seeing some documentaries we've been doing recently on cities, Yoruba cities. And we wanted to contribute a lot to this industry and more importantly to Yoruba culture. So we started going on, we started with IGRB, it's a breakfast show. So while we were going on, I met a woman, her name is Dr. Lola Dari who introduced me to advocacy uh, videos. So I started doing advocacy videos for her. But uh, something that was striking in that time was that, as at that time, I was struggling to find my feet in the new establishment. And now somebody comes with another burden. But you see, in that burden, in that load, I was able to find a way for it that nobody pre-qualifies for success. Your body and the load that you carry pushes you forward. Uh, this mic now. Okay. So the load and the body you carry will propel you forward to be successful. And so I started doing this, started acquiring one thing or the other. But I always believe that African culture is not necessarily uh, a backward culture. It's a culture that can interact with other and uh, we can be able to form what I consider as uh, afro Eurocentric agenda. When I was in three, I did a project. I wrote a, we usually have a 300 level project that we reach to write on African theater. And I presented my uh, project work to my supervisor and the title was uh, Afro-Centric Dance Experiment. And the man found that where that it was Afro-Centric Dance Okay, I think that's fine. Hello? Okay, 
So my lecturer was wondering what do I mean by Afro-Pluricentric dance experiment. But then, in the battle, there was one man, his name is uh, Abdul, I can't remember his surname now, who trained in France, he's a dancer. But he always likes to dance using... Uh, and it was this man. Okay, what was this man trying to do? So from talking to him, I was able to coin a name for the kind of experiments he was trying to do. And I started writing the projects. I scored very high. And that, I think, prepared me for what I'm doing now. So by the time we started doing shows, like Awala Dunde, people expected the typical things that happen in our Yoruba shows. Maybe there's a juju man and all that. But what we're trying to typify in those shows were uh, the normal family agenda. Then we went to a show called Borokini. Uh, Borokini was the first uh, language telling novella in Nigeria and maybe Africa, but at least we are certain of Nigeria. And when we wanted to do it, everybody found that very awkward that how would television be able to play 120 episodes of a language drama because nobody ever did it before. But I said, okay, let's try. And we brought in a lot of cultural elements to de uh, depict our roots and also to use a lot of contemporary and cosmopolitan elements to show how African culture has evolved and has moved forward. And if you look at it, as we are now, uh, from record, I think we have almost 100 million Yoruba speakers across the world, which makes Yoruba one of the most important language in the world. But gradually, I think a lot of us are also trying to forget that we are Yoruba people, either in our addressing, in our speaking, in our understanding, even in our proverbs. A lot of children these days do not speak and understand these proverbs. And I think if we want to hold on to our youth and want to retain our identity, holding on to our culture is a very, very fundamental part of our roots. And that is what we have held on to on our shows. And that is what has distinguished us from everybody. We went on as of 2019 to produce one of the most watched shows in Nigeria. And it was done in Yoruba language. And it shows that people are going to enjoy your roots or your culture, however you put it, as long as you present it with a lot of quality. I've had the opportunity to speak and be in other parts of the world on this Yoruba language and our roots. And you see that a lot of people all over the world are more interested in us than we are interested in ourselves. A lot of white men have more information about Africa than Africans ourselves. And recently, we are trying to postulate an agenda which shows that life started in Africa and precisely in Ilefe. I'm sure there is going to be a lot of argument about that, but we recognize that everybody has their uh, story of origin and nobody ever tries to dispute it. So we believe that life started in Ilefe and we are working on that to ensure that we can show us as Africans that we do not start our life with the Darwinian theory. We didn't start our life like the Chinese people with the Yellow Man theory. We started our life from Ife in Yoruba land. So we believe that our roots is very important and our root places a lot of burden on us. And the burden is what gives us identity. The burden is what gives us clarity on who we are. And as much as we embrace our roots, I believe there's so much we can do. There's so much we can do in interacting with the world, with our roots and our origin. So I encourage us to hold on firm to our roots and to ensure that in all we do, we are proud and able to carry our roots with us everywhere we go. Thank you very much.